Good evening. This is the agenda for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, November 19th, 2020. This is our virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order and pursuant to current state orders. This meeting will be recorded and made available on the town's website for viewing. And now our chair, Dan Silbo, will conduct the meeting. Hello, everybody. Um, so the first thing on our, on our agenda is public comments. I don't see anybody here from the public. So, uh, all right, uh, next is the minutes for October 22nd. Any corrections or additions? Dan, I just had one, um, one question on, on item G for the Solomon Wells house. Mm -hmm. Maybe I misunderstood. Um, this indicates that um, all agreed that it wasn't practical to open the house at this time with the current guidelines in place. I thought, and maybe I misunderstood, that we felt it was okay as long as guidelines could be met if there was an interest in renting. But I might have misunderstood. And, and but that's I read it as that we agreed that it shouldn't be rented. I thought we discussed it and thought it would be a bad idea, as, even if there were small groups, if if you know if they could follow the guidelines at that time. So. But I might have misunderstood, so somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. And then the only thing is, I think the concern was the bathroom facilities. Wasn't that the big concern, Kathy? Is uh, yeah, no, I think yeah. Mike is right. I think yeah. I um, yeah, I got this wrong. I think that we said we would look to meet the guidelines, and um, if everything was in place to do that. Yeah, I'll make that correction. Anything else, anybody? No. Move to approve as amended. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Seconded. Aye. Oh. Tom. Right. Tom seconded it. Um. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, monthly report for October. Let's see here. Kathy, are the Harbor Masters coming tonight? I don't think so. I think okay. um, he used to always tell me that <clears throat> once they were uh, closed, depending on what um, business he might have, he'd let me know. Okay. And we didn't hear from him. All right. And last month, just so you know, he actually had a problem with his cell phone. That's mm -hmm. why he couldn't get in. Okay. Let's see here. Kathy, the Special Olympics basketball jamboree, is that, um, are they still going to operate that as a, no, not at all? Okay. Yeah, the Special Olympics has uh, um, has ru um, rules themselves that if the town goes to uh, red, that the, their athletes are um, can't practice in person or anything. Okay. And it also cancels any of their activities if it's in that town. How did the Veterans Day ceremony go? I'll, I'll have Mary, Mary oversaw all that so she could, it went very well, but I'll have yeah. her speak to it. it. It really did go well. We were um, lucky to have warm weather uh, without sunshine. Without sunshine, it didn't rain on us. Um, and we had probably about 50 people, which is the outdoor max per Governor Lamont. Um, it was a very a shortened ceremony, but it was very meaningful. Uh, one of the commission members uh, is a poet and she did a, a reading of two of her own poems and then another one uh, that were very, very well received. And um, yeah, it, it turned out very nice. We had just the right mix of veterans, families, uh, dignitaries. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, considering COVID, it was a very nice event. Good. And we also uh, live streamed it on our Facebook page. Oh. Kathy, I'm just curious on the um, Santa's pancake breakfast delivery. How's that going to work? Canceled. It's canceled. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was going to be they were going to take orders, make the pancakes, deliver to the house. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. But now that we're spiking, uh, that had to go. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
All right, anything else? Okay, um, letters and announcements. Any letters, Kathy? Didn't have any. Okay. All right, we're just whipping through this. All right, um, old business, field use for the fall season. <clears throat> I just wanted to let you know quickly that the fall season has ended. Um, as I said earlier, we did have the youth sports playing and the high school playing on um, most of the fields and um, everything went well from what we've heard in town. We, um, if you recall all the fall sports except football for the high school played games. Uh, they also had indoor volleyball that went um, and um, uh, Eagles youth football was able to play um, one, one home game for each team in the last weekend in October. Oh. They generally played, they practiced in town, but they played away. But um, they got permission to play each age division one game oh, that was on the week, that weekend for the, um, football. And um, yeah, and so that was, so that went well. That's good. It's kind of tough on the kids. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, we're, we're hearing that some of the um, positive cases mm -hmm. um, that are showing up now, you go back two weeks, some of it is the youth sports. That's what some of what we're hearing from the, uh, from the schools. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Xavier, they had some issue with the hockey team. But I think if, if the sports are inside, it's a lot bigger risk than the kids being outside. Because um, I don't think they had any issues with Xavier with any of the outside sports. Yeah, for some reason, hockey, hockey, <laughs> our, we, the health district director said, I wish we didn't have hockey. Yeah, it's so inside they, in the locker room. Getting stuff you know. from hockey. Yeah, it's tough. And there were a couple of um, regional tournaments that teams went to. So a lot of different things that went on that kids got exposed to. Mm -hmm. All right. There were no complaints, right, this year about the fields or anything? No, the fields yeah. were, they, they rested all summer. So they were, they were in good shape. And, and it, if you think about it, it didn't really rain a lot. Yeah even when we wanted it to rain. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Uh, it looks like here you got a COVID update on the facilities. Yeah, I just wanted to give the board a kind of an update of where we are with COVID. And when I did the agenda a week ago, I thought I was going to give you one report. And that's how fast things change that we just have different reports. But um, originally I was going to tell you that, well, it's still the, we've had the community center has been on a limited opening, uh, the Wells house, when they went down to, uh, private parties and, and getting groups together for 10, not going to work at the Wells house, uh, just wouldn't be, make any sense to, to have that place open. Um, the nature center was doing some, they did, um, a nature preschool nature school that was mostly outdoors in the fall. And we had plans to do it indoors starting uh, in December. And a lot of that changed today because we had our, our uh, EOC meeting, our emergency operations team meeting today. And the numbers are spiking. So they've asked us to look at everything that we're doing indoors and to revisit it and try and go online if we can, kind of trying to get around the holidays and try and not let that spike get any higher. So the community center, we're gonna go for all the fitness classes. Um, they, they finish up um, on Mondays for fall A. So with fall B, we're gonna put them all online. And um, we're gonna let some of the classes finish up and we probably won't offer some of them in December. 
and the community center, we, um, a decision was made today. We had been having groups from youth sports ask us to use the, the, the community center gym. And we were on hold with that. And now with the spiking, they're not, they're not looking to have any of the um, indoor basketball, soccer, any of that at this point in time and to watch it because that's, as I said earlier, that's one of the areas they've identified that the youth getting together outside of school that is having a, an effect. It's not the only one, it's just one of what they're finding. So that's kind of, kind of where we are now. Um, <clears throat> we've got, as I had said earlier in another meeting that our gymnastics is out at a private facility, our tennis is out at a private facility. So we're talking with them and what they're doing. They're even held to a higher standard and the classes are, are small. So we're, we're evaluating them now. So there's a lot of things going on with those pieces. And they're trying to hope if we kind of, I guess the hope is if we can contain through the holidays and look at it again in January and see what's happening, that's the best way to go at this time. So that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. And I'd certainly, you know, answer any questions. It's kind of a, a brief overview of what we're looking at. And we've even done our preschool program um, is, is an online program. And that's actually turning out well. We're hearing a lot of good things about it. It's a short, it's short. It's not like the couple of hours it would normally be if it was in person, but that's going along. So staff are trying to be creative and figure out things we can do for the holidays to get the community involved. So you may see some things coming up. It's still in the a, we're still in the plan, the discussing phase, and B, then we have to run it by uh, town staff to see if we can do some stuff. That doesn't involve attracting a crowd. Are they going to be doing a tree lighting? <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> the town is putting the lights on the tree. They, we will be lighting the tree, but um, it'll be lit for the holiday season. But there won't be, there's no holidays on Maine. That's been canceled. And there won't be a formal lot of people tree lighting ceremony. Mm -hmm. And we may look at the live streaming if, if we do a little something. So um, check out our Facebook page. Okay. And, um, and there may be some news on that. But we're not advertising anything because we can't have a crowd come. Because everybody would want to come to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, new business. We got the seasonal report for uh, the boating. As you can see, we made money. Yes. Everybody was vote was boating. We made a lot of money this year. <laughs> we did. What's the most you ever made? Is that the most you've ever made? Uh, geez, we, we went back. We went back five years and that was the most. I can I can look into that, Dan, and go back farther. Yeah, just sure. Just for just for ha ha's see. Cause that's you know, that's a good amount of money. And uh, any idea what we paid the staff down there for the year? Oh, I, I don't, I can get that for you. I don't have yeah. that right just now. Just like to see I... the difference in, in what we took in and what we paid. Yeah, the, all the revenue, that revenue, that amount, does, does that all go into a separate fund or is that divvied up? That, that all goes into the Cove fund? It goes into the Cove Preservation Fund. Okay. And the, ex the expenses for the staff that's down there, that comes out of um, your budget or physical services or something? Uh, that comes out of the preservation fund. Oh, it does. Okay. I mean, that's a, that's a good chunk. There. Well, you all summer we talked about how busy it was down there. Yeah. And it, I think if you notice, I think a lot of it was the uh, the daily launch. Mm hmm Yeah, I mean, thirty-one thousand dollars is. When do we review the fee the fees for uh, the upcoming next year? Um, 
we can review them whenever the board wants to. We generally do it when when we look at fees and determine if if we want to raise them or not. We we try to be reasonable with those fees. I hadn't if you would ask if you asked me today, I hadn't thought of looking at them. But if the board wants to, we could definitely. Kathy, I think if if we do review it, we should have 2018 prices included because 2019 with the construction, we lowered all the prices, but just curious how 2018 compares to 2020. I don't know if it, the rates are the same or did we go up since 2018? They're the same. They are. Okay. The rates are the same as 2018. Okay. The 2020 are. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I don't think it hurts to look at them and compare, see how we compare to all the you know, surrounding towns just to make sure we're still in the ballpark and we could always leave them alone. Yeah, no, I think we should look at them too. Okay. All right. Um, plans for winter programs, Kathy. Staff are currently going through setting up in our, our uh, registration software a whole set of winter programs. We normally do winter spring, but we're just going to do winter because we just don't know what's going to happen. And then we can come out with spring a little later on. And this way we're not bringing a whole bunch of stuff to the public and changing everything. And we're gonna watch and see what goes on and see if how much of it, like our fitness programs, we offered both uh, in person and online. And if you can't go in person, then you go online. So staff are looking at a lot of those to see what's going on. And again, we're gonna look at, right now we're, we're not in the high school pool, nor should we be honestly. And now we'll look again at that in January. And the good thing with the rec track software, once everything's in, then we could go in and activate whatever it is we want to show and want people to sign up for and hold back on whatever we can't do yet. Or if we have to delay a week or two, or we normally start the middle of January, maybe we don't start till February. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. All right, very good. Any questions on that, anyone? Yeah. And I should mention part of that is also whether or not the schools will be available. Okay. Mary, I'm, I'm curious if anything else is in the schools besides just the education piece in New Britain. Uh, yeah, we have um, uh, before and after school, at least in my building. Um, and they would have been when we shut down um, because we, it's, it's fun, not funny. COVID was all the, the adults, it was not kids. Um, but uh, yeah, they've just like totally evacuated the building. So um, if we're not in there, then the, the park, it, I think it is New Britain Park and Rec um, that runs the before and after school. So they were, they're not in the building. Okay, thanks. I'm just curious, because we're here in, we're in pretty much the park and rec departments for, for recreation programs are pretty much not in any school building. Right. All right. Um, Kathy, is the Keene Foundation running anything? They're not either. Mm -hmm. They're doing a couple of things online. Mary oversees that. They've got um, a, a big time science program that a high crest mom Actually, I think her oldest or her youngest it might even be in the high school at this point. Andrea Glico runs. Uh, it's a virtual class. The science kits are dropped off before the program starts at every uh, individual's house. She can only do 12 at a time or nine, actually. I think she thought 12 was too many. So she actually ends up with a couple of classes full when she does it. And then we're going to try to do an art program um, as well, a virtual art program mm -hmm. for the winter. I mean, going from 70 classes to three is kind of depressing, mm -hmm. uh, but they're trying to remain relevant and offer something for the kids. Yeah. All right, everyone's trying. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Salomon Wells House, any updates, anything we should know, Kathy, or? No, not at this time. We're, um, we're on hold with that just because it's the, the rooms are so small. We don't want to be putting people in there mm -hmm. because even if they told us they only had 10, I know there'd be 15 or 20. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the, the, the holiday time. So we're on hold with that right now. All right. Okay. Um, the next thing is the uh, Keisha Farm Committee update. Um, I watched the town council meeting from Monday night. Um, what was on the agenda for the farm was that uh, um, the committee has gotten uh, in touch with the state because there's a barn on the property there. It's an old dairy barn. So we were inquiring that uh, you know, what we could do with the barn and um, could we get any money for it? So the response from the state was, uh, if you get it qualified as like a state landmark or something like that, um, you would have access to um, money to do like a site evaluation for lack of a better term. And originally it was a 50-50 match, but the state, because of COVID, was going to pay the whole thing 100%. So, um, that was on the agenda for the uh, town council. They approved it. And then uh, what it is, is it doesn't lock you into anything. I mean, they could tell us that the barn's in such bad shape to knock it down. So just because you name it a historic landmark at a state level, it doesn't mean that it can't be knocked down or, or they'll kind of give us advice on what to do with it. So it's nice because, uh, you know, we don't have to pay for anything. And we're moving ahead a little bit with, with the area. We're still meeting with the uh, University of Hartford to try to get um, you know a whole evaluation of the site. And uh, there's a lot of work to do with that. They have to uh, get some more or less focus groups or something to that effect so we get input from the community on, on what they want to do. Included with that is I would think uh, like traffic flow patterns and everything to that effect because whatever we decide to get in there whatever the community wants we don't want to ruin the neighborhoods so, so there's a lot to do we're hoping the university of harford and their students we met the two students that are working on it would be able to do this you know it's more or less a wait and see to see what we get out of it um and you know i'll keep you guys updated certainly when they start asking for input i'm going to probably go to kathy so that the you know the board has input on a lot of things. So, but I don't know what is going to show up there. Our timelines um, right now they're about the same. I think we think we might have something by the, you know middle of the summer maybe, um, but I don't know. We'll have to see how things progress. And then um, I would encourage you to watch the town council meeting. That was, was like five hours long. I think the Keisha Farm thing is about two and a half hours in. So skip the two and a half hours and just kind of listen to that discussion. It's a very interesting discussion. Um, so I don't want to say too much about it, but it was uh, interesting. It's, that's all I'm going to say. So any questions on that? Dan, did they, did they agree to proceed with the... Um interns from U of H and kind of a scope of what they're going to do or that's still up in the air? No, I, that's what we're going to do. And that's, um, of course, that's another thing. It's no fee from what we know. And uh, Gary um, did an excellent job explaining things to the counselors because some of them didn't understand that this would all be for nothing. We, you know, it wouldn't cost us anything and the town wouldn't be locked into anything at this point. It was just, uh, it just happened because of COVID that they pay for everything. Uh, and I don't know if uh, people uh, are wary of everything they get for free or not, but, uh, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for the town to, to learn about the property and it doesn't cost us anything. So you know, I thought it was a no brainer, but yeah, like I said, it watched the conversation. It was quite interesting. Um, did, did they give Gary the authority to, try to get the thing started with U of H or does he have to keep coming back to the council? No, we're already doing it. He's already doing it. Okay, good. 
because they what happened is um, they denied the fifty five thousand dollars, which is what the consultancy would have cost, and they told them to find an alternate. And so that's what Gary found was, uh, you know, he's an alum of uh, University of Harvard. So what he did is he contacted somebody over there and they said, oh, this is great. We got a program for this. We think it'll fit in great. And we got a couple of kids we're gonna find for you. And they found us two or two, I think there was two at the last meeting and they're both pretty sharp just from talking to them. Um, my concern is they don't have a lot of experience doing this. It's kind of gonna be new. So we can tell them what we want, but whether they really can, uh, you know, what they can produce, I don't know. So we'll find out and I'm hoping for the best. So I'm trying to be diplomatic. That's all I have to say. Okay. Um, uh, board member comments, any comments or? I just got a couple quick things. The. Um... Brainerd Airport Advisory Committee. I think Suzanne was, we were talking about last time and Kathy, I think they were gonna meet shortly after our meeting last time. I didn't know if there was any update for the and trees. That's on me, I forgot. I, I, I forgot to follow up on that. I'm, I'll get something out to you guys on that. And the, um, the boating ordinance, I know we had set up the subcommittee and I think you were gonna try to get something from the PD so we could yeah, yeah, kind of so we get I, something. yeah, I pulled everything out. I'm, <clears throat> I'm reviewing it now and i um, going to be sending it off to the police. There's when I reread it, there's some things in there that don't have to go to the police. So I have to separate out um, some of the things that are proposed that are not, they have nothing to do with the police. I didn't realize there was an intermingling of all that. So I'm in the process of pulling it out and preparing it for the police. Okay. And the, um, it, it, maybe it's under Harbor management and, and that's okay. But um, I know last time we talked, the boat was uh, not serviceable. It had engine issues. And I guess I just want to be, go on record to make sure. And I'm not sure if it's, you're going to oversee it, but I would prefer that you do rather than physical service to make sure that an estimate comes in and we get that thing fixed up because we'll, we'll be sitting here in April and May and we'll <laughs> still be wondering and nobody will have money to fix it if, it if it is going to be fixed. So I know it's winter, nobody's thinking about it now, but I just don't want that to slip through the cracks. Mm -hmm. No, it hasn't. And Dan had contacted um, someone he knew in the boat business who contacted a member of my staff. So they've been discussing some things um, and giving us some ideas about um, the boat engines. And we're also talking with the harbor master. And whatever proposal we come up with, we'll probably come back to the board. And we'll talk about it within the board. This is what we're proposing. Do you agree? So it'll be kind of a, a staff recommendation to the board. And then we'll go ahead and purchase it. Would that be funded from the Cove Preservation yeah. Fund to fix that boat? OK. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's good that you get more than one. Uh idea on that that's um i don't know who the first people you contacted with but i mean i can say the name of the, the uh, company it's reynolds garage and marine reynolds and reynolds at the shore i deal with them for the state for uh, some of the things i'm dealing with and i knew they dealt with both and i said they send me information said um this is what we're looking at you know what do you think about pricing and everything and then i gave him Ka, uh, kathy's contact information so, you know, maybe we'll get a better bid from it and maybe we won't. So, but I think it's uh, certainly in our interest to get as much information as we can. And stat, we're also talking with both um, uh, the, the police and the fire that oversee their boats, not physical services, but people in, um, in both the fire department and the police department and who they work with when they get their boats fixed. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking at it that way. Yeah. yeah Thank I, you. Yeah, there is one other thing just from my neighborhood. Um, there's a Facebook page for our neighborhood. So they have uh, all these postings and there's a uh, basketball court on the street over from us on a reservoir, which is never used by the way. I go by it every day. It's never used. And uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago and we had a warm weekend 
and there was a bunch of kids playing on the court. And um, for the first time, I drove by it in, in I don't know, the entire year. Um, so some of the neighbors, I don't know if they were concerned for two reasons. One, there was garbage left on the court. Um, and I looked, and it would probably take a minute to pick it up. Um, and then the other reason was uh, there was you know, a lot of kids playing basketball. So I don't know if they were worried about the COVID thing or what. But I was actually happy to see people playing on the court because I haven't seen anybody playing on the court in 10 years since I've, since I've been here. So uh, I didn't know if you heard anything about that or, or not, but uh, you know, that's, that court is almost like a lost court in town and it's, uh, it's just never used. It's, uh, so I, was actually I actually got a call more. from a neighbor in that yeah. area that said that, could we fix it up because there, there's starting to be more kids in the neighborhood and um, they're starting to use the court. And yeah. I was able to tell them that their timing was good because we just did Standish and Greenfield basketball courts. Mm -hmm. And next up in CIP that'll be asked for for next year is Old Reservoir and Cedar Street. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it definitely needs to be fixed up, but I just don't see too many people using it. It's just not, I was shocked when I saw that many kids on it. I've never seen, like I said, in 10, well, I've been here about 13 years. I've never seen more than like two kids on it at, at once. It's just never used. So, uh, I mean, that would be great if we had the money. I don't know that that's a priority just from what I see every day. I actually drive by it every day when I come home from work. When I go out on the weekends, I drive by it on purpose to see if it's being used. And it's just not, uh, it's not like Greenfield where I drive by on a Sunday morning and there's 30 kids on it. You know, it's just not. So, Kathy, so are, the hoops, are the hoops and nets up on all of the basketball courts? Um, they are. They, they've been up since, I think, August. I think they went up in August. Yeah, actually, that came up at the meeting today, whether or not to... Um, that we had to close the basketball courts and I asked and they agreed that we leave them open and wait and see if there's a problem. Mm -hmm. You get, we got to have some things out there for people to do. And it's, it's supposed to get a well, nice, what Friday and Saturday anyways. But, um, and plus it's a pain in the neck taken down the rim. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just really hard. Yeah. But if we're just in unique times, I, mean, is, I, do is there... I do see Greenfield used when I go to see my mom. Um, that that court's always got people on it, but the other courts I go by, I just don't see anybody on them. Has it been any any thought on ice skating, or they're going to wait and see? Ice skating. And, and any of the town ponds that you normally have ice skating on for because of COVID. Uh, I, um, it's funny because we were looking at. When we um, when we all did our virtual rec and we did the virtual National Rec and Park Association convention conference, they had a um, they were you could rent uh, an ice skating um, rink for a month, and so we were saying, oh, that sounds really cool, and uh, we were talking about it, and then when we found out today that we have to be careful of numbers, we're like, ah, eh, maybe we can't spend that kind of money. But we never got into, we can't do the ice skating on the ponds. So right now, if it freezes, uh, we can, right now we can look at it. Even when we tell the kids not to go on it, they go on it. So the well, police yeah. are always kicking them off. Right. But um, I guess the, the, if it freezes, it freezes in January. So it gives us a month to see what all is going to play out. Uh, we'd love to have the ice skating because, again, you want to have some things for people to do, and that could be a family activity. Again, if it's safe to do, have have they talked about canceling things in Glastonbury? Uh, probably, probably on the same. I think you're on the same pages as you folks are with the schools and and the rest of the stuff. Trying to do as much as possible, but that's all. I think getting squeezed, so you're going to see less, less like we did in the spring. Now, someone told me that they thought that Glastonbury like built an area that they flooded for ice skating. Did yes, that at the at the, uh, at the new uh, boathouse right between the boathouse and the community center. 
and they had some issues initially. They straightened them out this past winter. So now it's a, it is a skating area that they flood just for skating. Do they put boards up and stuff? No, it's just an open depression in the ground. It's just right in the center of the park. You'd, and it's just grass. It's only like three, you know, a couple of feet deep and, you know, people just, you know, can hang out and surround it, but there's no, just a couple seats around it so people could put the skates on, but you'd never even know it was flooded to be used for skating. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's a nice really? area. Last year, I think was the first year that they, uh, it really worked well, if you will, because they had some issues with the drainage because there's valving and stuff when you flood it and it wouldn't hold water and stuff. It's just on grass. That's all it is. Oh, and does so. it have to be frozen first before you flood it? Um, they, the they, filled, they filled it and then it froze and then they were just topping it off and cleaning it, but it was uh, not a pond. It's very safe. It's in the center of the park. So it's a, it's a great area. And it's, uh, so it's like uh, a depression in the park. Yeah. And there's just a few lights around. Like I said, you'd never, if you drove by, you'd never, you'd never know. I'll take a picture and send it over. It's not oh, even that big. Nice. Not even that big. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know that we have, because that's what we were thinking. Could we flood something? But because years ago we tried buying the plastic and put the plastic rink up. That didn't work because when it got warm and it melted, all the skates ripped the plastic. Yeah. No, this is very easy. Very little to, you know, get ready to go and it's, it works well. Gee. Kathy, the mayor put a hockey rink in his backyard. Maybe he'll let us use that. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> okay. We'll have to ask him how thick yeah. it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> I read an article today on um, you putting up boards and you could flood over a basketball court or something, but they say it won't do any damage, but I didn't believe, you know, you don't believe that, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. I guess we, if you're up in Canada, maybe it works. Do you have an update on the grant um, that was going to be to renovate the pond over on like Middletown? Is that the name of the road? Yeah. Spring Street. Spring mm -hmm. Street. And you wanted me to speak a little more about the grant? Uh, just if there was anything new to, to speak about. Um, yeah, what, what, what has happened, because it, it takes a while, once you, the state says they're going to give you the money, there is a, a process that it takes to go through to get all the approvals. And the first step was to start with council to get them to approve the certification to move forward. And they did that Monday night at that meeting. I don't know, Dan, if you stayed for it or- I or actually, I saw it on the agenda and I shut it off after three <laughs> hours, so. It went five hours, so. That part did get approved. So that now allows the town to submit paperwork to the state. You need the town council to sign off on it. And I understand that took the same kind of time. Yeah. To just to get did it. council just to, partly to understand the process and, um, and, and, and um, and determined that yes, we want to accept this money. So that did happen. So now they'll start putting together all the paperwork to get the approval. You need to get the approval from the state before you can spend any money because if you spend any money now, they won't reimburse you. They'll reimburse you once you sign, everybody signs off on it, the mm -hmm. state and the town. And that'll take a while. That unfortunately doesn't happen that quickly. Um, and um, but it's got us thinking. I actually already had a staff member talking about um, how to best. We're looking at it from the recreation side, and the engineering department is looking from the dam side, the dam itself that they have to fix and fix that water flow and everything. So um, so there's two different things going on. So we're going to get the leftover money after they fix the dam. <laughs> but they still, I think, have enough money to do something there. Good. Well, uh, speaking of things to flood, I hate to say this, but when we were kids, they used to flood um, on Knott Street. It's right next to the trail. I don't know if Tom remembers. Oh, yeah. Right next to the trail, um, you walk to the back of the high school there. Like um, It's almost across from NOAX. I don't know where, if you know where that is. We're across from Folly Brook almost. Okay. You go down Folly Brook and you're on, uh, holy cow, I'm on, on Knott's Street. 
if you look to the right, if you look more or less straight ahead is the trail. If you look right to the right of that, it's almost all, I don't know what to call, overgrown brush and everything. That was a pond they'd flooded every year. And uh, I think what happened it was flooding some of the neighbor's houses or something. It, there was some issue, but they used to flood it every year for ice skating. You could skate. Yeah, I remember that was Sal, if you're still in touch with Sal. He'll okay. remember that. Yeah. You skate all the way to Pine Acres. That's where I would get right there. And then uh, there was a brook that went all the way. And um, my recollection is there'd always be, you know, 20 to 50 people just skating all over, having a oh. great time there. I wondered why they stopped doing that. It seemed like a, mm -hmm. a great place to go. Yeah. Tom, we were thinking about flooding field number one because it has the lights. I think that's good. You, you have a well lit up area. As long as all the bulbs are replaced. No. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, back up the brook. Like, no, it has the parking. It has the lights. It's got sure. the um, the pavilion with the um, the, the fireplace. Sure. <laughs> um, we thought that would make a real nice area. So we've just been brainstorming just ways to do things to have family activities in yeah. the winter because people are going to want to get outside and do something mm -hmm. but yeah so i wish that, but the that field isn't designed to be a bowl yeah <laughs> so i don't know if the water would stay in it we were going to ask um, the fire department to bring their truck and you know flood it what about the pond it just doesn't freeze the, the ducks oh. and geese that are in there they keep swimming in it <laughs> It's crazy. How dare they? How I know, right? They? <laughs> you know, we need that really cold, hard freeze that, you know, it happens fast so that they'd go away or they'd get stuck in the ice <laughs> and then the fox would eat them, you know? <laughs> oh, jeez. And then we could flood it. <laughs> well, Mary, wasn't, Sal would tell me that either we had, used to have ice skating at the pond. And yeah, back when back when I was in uh, college, uh, over Christmas break, I would be a skating rink guard or a skating guard at Millwoods, and it would freeze enough. Um, and you know there was a some dinky lights, and it would go until like eight o'clock at night. Um, you know it, the the wind would pick up, be like sixty miles an hour and 22 below. But there were the crazy people who liked to skate, and you know I'd have to sit out there going. Yeah, whatever. But. So yeah, that is they one of the to. areas we look at that in Spring Street. You know, and Spring Street, I don't think I don't think it froze last year. It froze, but not enough to put public skating on. Like the kids would play hockey there, but you couldn't put a hundred people on it. Just let it go over the road. It freezes on the road anyway. <laughs> I think we'd have a nice area there. All right. Um, then our next thing is Harbor Management Commission, but I don't think we have a report, right? No. No, because there's really nothing to report on. Yeah, um, they've closed for the season. Yeah, I did have a question. Um, next meeting is a meeting where we um, prioritize things. Is that right? Yes. So you got a big list for us this time? Well, I have last year's list because we didn't get anything last year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but um, but we're we're reviewing everything to determine um, if anything's changed. Okay. All right. But you can tell me. Do you want a big list or do you want a little list or? <laughs> well, we might as well get a big list. But <laughs> let's look at everything so that we see what's going on. Um, I think that's it. Anybody have any more comments or questions or everybody good? All okay. right, can I? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all those in favor. Aye. <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys next month. Thank you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, everybody have a nice Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy everybody. Thanksgiving. Yeah, bye-bye. Take care.